This video is part of my complete practical CCNA course where I use physical devices to explain and demonstrate topics in the CCNA exam. I think it's really important that you see how things actually work, real routers and switches, real computers, rather than just learning about this from a theoretical point of view or in a simulated environment, you actually see how things work. Now we can't talk about computer networking without discussing what a network actually is. And I'm not talking about a social media network or a network with friends. I'm talking about a computer network. Now, AI seems to be one of those topics that people either love or hate, but let's see if a computer can tell us what a computer network actually is. Alexa, what is a computer network? A computer network is a set of computers sharing resources located on or provided by network nodes. Computers use common communication protocols over digital interconnections to communicate with each other. Now, that's actually just taken from Wikipedia. And I have a bit more here. We're told that these interconnections are made up of telecommunication network technologies based on physically wired optical and wireless radio frequency methods that may be arranged in a variety of network topologies. Now, that just sounds like a bunch of words. If you're not used to the terms used in networking, you're going to struggle. So it's really important that we define some of the terms in networking. I will warn you, that a lot of people that start in networking really struggle because we've got all of these terms and it's hard to understand all the different terms. But just bear with me and go through the course. You'll find that as we repeat definitions and as I show you different examples, it'll make a lot more sense. But let's start with what is a computer network explained by a human. Now, basically, we're looking at computers that are sharing resources. Now, what is a resource? A resource could be a file, it could be a video, it could be a picture. We basically want to share something with each other you watching this video through a computer network. Computer network is made up of different nodes or end devices. So we talk about nodes here or hosts. So node could be a computer, could be a laptop like this. It could be an Alexa like this. It could be a server like this. It could be a phone or any other device that you have connected to a network. It could be routers and switches and other network devices. A host is an end device. So think of a host kind of like a PC or a phone or a server where one device called a client is accessing a resource or something that's shared by a server. Now, the reason I read the next part of the definition is we are sharing resources connected via different means. Could be a fiber optic cable like this. So notice light shining through this cable. We could be connected using copper ethernet cables like these, or we could be connected to a Wi-Fi access point like this one. Now, a lot of us in our home networks may have a home router such as this. Notice Wi-Fi. That's one way to share resources. We can connect from one device to another using Wi-Fi. Or you could connect to the internet using satellite technology by using a Starlink such as this one. Networks can get really complicated. The biggest network that we know of, unless you've learned about aliens having bigger networks out there somewhere, is the internet. But networks don't have to be that big. A network can simply consist of two devices or two nodes, or if you like, two hosts. Now in networking today, we have what is called the client server model. We have what are called servers. Here's an example of a server. It's providing a service or sharing a resource with a client. A client could be a phone as an example, or could be a laptop. Servers come in different shapes and sizes. Notice if I open here, we can see the server has a hard drive in it. Here's another hard drive, and I could continue opening it up and you'll see that it consists of a whole bunch of hard drives. Servers that are used in data centers, such as in Amazon or in YouTube, tend to be very large. They have a lot of CPU power, they have a lot of RAM, they have a lot of hard disk space because they are serving many, many clients. Many client devices are accessing the service provided by the server. In other words, they want the resource, which could be a YouTube video, it could be a file, it could be something else that's shared. But a server doesn't have to look this way. Your laptop could act as a client when it's trying to get a resource or it could act like a server when it's providing a resource to a client. So as an example, on this laptop, I'm running the Plex server. So if I search for Plex here, notice it says Plex media server. That provides a service or a resource to a client. In this example, it's providing videos. So if I open up Plex, you can see various videos are hosted on this laptop, which is now acting as a server. It has a resource that can be accessed by a client. So on my phone, as an example, if I connect to the IP address of the server. I can see that a web page is displayed and I can press play 
and a video plays. That video is playing from that server. The phone is acting as a client. The PC is acting as a server. The resource is streamed, in this case, from the laptop to the phone through Wi-Fi. So it's going through the air. I don't have a physical cable connecting the phone to the laptop. Transmission is through Wi-Fi. But notice, if I close that service down, so what I'll do is exit the Plex service. Notice the site is no longer available. And on the phone, it says the site can't be reached. Now I'm connecting from the phone to the laptop using an IP address. IP address is a logical address for a host on a network. In networks today, we use either TCP IP version 4 or TCP IP version 6. We'll focus on TCP IP version 4 first. A device such as a laptop and a phone gets allocated an IP address either manually or through a protocol known as DHCP or Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol. So DHCP, when a device connects to the Wi-Fi network, as an example, your home Wi-Fi router gets allocated an IP address by the router. So this device has an IP address of 192.168.0.121. That IP address was allocated through DHCP. This device will use a different IP address. So as an example, on the phone, if I go to settings, connections, Wi-Fi, I can see that the IP address was allocated through DHCP and the IP address that's allocated is 192.168.0.206. For these two devices to communicate, they need to have IP connectivity between them. Now, generally, when you connect to the internet, you don't use an IP address, you use a name, an easy to remember name, such as google.com or youtube.com. That name is actually translated into an IP address using a protocol or language called DNS or domain name system. It converts the name to an IP address because devices on a network don't use names. They use IP addresses and MAC addresses, which are hardware addresses burnt into a network interface card on a device. Now, for a service to be available, we need to run some software on a device. So on this laptop, we're running the Plex server. It's basically a piece of software that's offering a service to clients. Clients connect to the server using an IP address and a port number. So in this example, the port number used is 32400. Think of a port number as allowing a device to listen to different connections for different services on different numbers. So as an example, HTTP, which is used on the internet, generally today we use HTTPS, those protocols are used by your web browser to connect to a web server. So as an example, google.com. Those servers use a well-known port number of 80 for HTTP and 443 for HTTPS. Here, the Plex server is using a different port number. So when I connect from the client, to the server, I have to make sure that I'm connecting to that port number 32400. So I connect to the IP address and the specific port number. If I opened up another tab here and I just went to the IP address of that server without the port number, notice it says the site can't be reached because no service is listening on that port number. There isn't a process or some software on the computer that's listening to requests on that port number. This is port number 80. You have to connect to the right port number, which is 32400 in this example. So to summarize, this laptop is acting as a server in this example because it's providing a service to a client. In this case, the phone is the client initiating a connection to the server, asking for something. In this case, it's asking for a video. So as an example, I can press play once again and the video plays on my phone. This laptop, acts as a server running the Plex service, but can act as a client. So if I go to google.com, notice it's acting as a client here. In this case, it's initiating a session to Google asking for some information. In this case, the port number used is 443. That's just a default port used for HTTPS, which is the protocol used for secure web communication. Now, before we had networks, how did people share data, videos, software, photos with each other? they would have to use something like this. So here's an example of a game using CD-ROMs. So if you're as old as I am, you would remember getting games like this and having to install them using CDs. Here's an example with Windows 95. So you'd have to install Windows with a CD-ROM like this. And if you're even older than that, like me, you might remember floppy disks. So here's an example of a three and a quarter inch floppy disk. I remember when I was young, we had bigger ones, but let's not worry about how old I am. The moral of the story is that when you wanted to share 
data from, for instance, one computer to another. You'd have to copy a file onto something and then physically transport it to the other device and insert this in the other device to move the information to that device. Modern day example would be a USB drive like this. So as an example, I would plug it into a computer, copy the data onto it, go to the other computer, plug it in, copy the data from the USB drive to the computer. Now, that's okay if we physically locate it close to each other, but it doesn't work if you're on the other side of the world. Trying to post stuff like this is just a nightmare. It makes much more sense to have everything available electronically through a network. Now, networks vary in size. You could have a small network, perhaps at home, or a very, very large network, like the internet, which has millions of devices connected to it. But the simplest type of network consists of only two devices. As an example, two laptops connected via an ethernet cable. So in this example, I've got two Windows laptops. These are more modern laptops, so they don't have network interface cards built into them, but I could get a USB to ethernet converter like this. So this is basically a network interface card, which allows me to connect ethernet to a laptop. So as an example, on the first laptop, I could plug an ethernet cable like that. On the second laptop, plug in an ethernet cable and connected like that. Link lights have gone on. Hopefully you can see those, but link lights are on now on these two USB to ethernet converters. And I could now share information from one laptop to another. Somehow I don't think many of you are carrying ethernet cables around like this and network to USB adapters to allow devices to share information like this. Today, we typically use Wi-Fi to share information. So here's a more modern example. I've got two iPhones and I wanna share an image from one iPhone to another. Now a network is created between two iPhones using Bluetooth and Wi-Fi when AirDrop is used. So what I'll do is use AirDrop to share the image. We're told that we need to enable Bluetooth. So I'll do that and now it's picked up the other phone. So I'll select that and on the other phone, we're told that we need to accept the file. So I'll accept the file and there you go. The file has been copied from one phone to the other. That's an example of a very simple network where I'm sharing something in this case, an image with another device. So networks don't have to be very complicated. They can be very simple. As an example, two PCs connected by an ethernet cable or two iPhones or two other types of devices sharing something using either copper ethernet cables or fiber cables or Wi-Fi. But the next piece is communication protocols. What is a communication protocol? It's essentially a language or a way to communicate. So just like a human language, I'm speaking English here, there are various rules and conventions for the way that we speak and communicate. In computer networks, we have similar rules for how information is communicated. So as an example, one of the most common communication protocols that we use is IP, IP version 4 specifically. We also have IPv6 or IP version 6, but internet protocol version 4 is the most common protocol that's been used for many, many years. It defines the way that devices talk. There are many protocols out there. You may have heard of some like HTTP or hypertext transfer protocol, which is how we send traffic through the web. We also have secure HTTP or HTTPS or also known as SSL. This is basically a secure version of HTTP. So when you go to a website such as youtube.com, the protocol used here between your phone or the language used between your phone and the YouTube servers is IP version 4 as well as HTTPS or SSL. Your web browser is using the protocol HTTPS to communicate with the server and to actually send the traffic on the internet, we're using IP version 4. Don't worry too much about that. The moral of the story is we use protocols or languages to communicate with one another. Humans use, for instance, English or another language. Computer devices use IP version 6 and other protocols such as FTP, HTTP, DNS, and other protocols that you may or may not have heard of. Now, what's the whole point of a computer network? Basically, we are sharing resources. We are sharing something with one another. A resource could be a photo, could be a video, it could be a file. Basically, you go onto the internet, not to check IP version 4 or whatever protocol, you go onto the internet for something like entertainment or education on YouTube, or you go to a news site to see what's going on with the, with the current news. You are basically using your phone or another device to connect to a server that is sharing something with you. Now, what is a NIC or network interface card? It's basically the way that a device connects to a network. Here are some examples of network interface cards. This is a very old one. 
This is a 3Com network interface card. Different Ethernet methods were used to connect to a network. So as an example, RJ45, the UTP or untwisted pair cabling, which is what we typically use today. It actually also used an older type of Ethernet. This is 10Base2 or ThinNet, a very old method of connecting to a network. We don't use that these days. You might come across it, but hopefully not. And then we had an even older version of Ethernet, 10Base5 here or ThickNet. But basically, what a network interface card does is it gets inserted into a computer and then gives you access to the network. This is a more modern network interface card. This one runs at one gigabits per second, RJ45 connector. This is a 25 gigabits per second network interface card. Notice the connections here are different to this one. It's not copper. These are SFPs. So we would connect an SFP to this network interface card as follows, and then we can connect the PC to the network using fiber. So a fiber cable like this. Each of these ports runs at 25 gigabits per second. So in a PC such as this one, I've actually got three network interface cards here. One is 25 gigabits per second, and then I've got a Wi-Fi network interface card inserted into this computer. So I could use any one of those interfaces to connect to a network or to multiple networks. Here's a Raspberry Pi, which you may have come across. It has a little network interface connector here. So notice the NIC is built onto the board. So this is a full computer with USB interfaces as well as a NIC. Here I have various Wi-Fi or wireless adapters. So you would connect to a computer using USB as an example with this one you might want to use USB-C, various Wi-Fi adapters giving you different options when it comes to speed. Here's a very small one, so nice little connector giving you Wi-Fi. Now in Ethernet or in Wi-Fi, a device such as a PC, which has this network card inserted into it, is known by a MAC address or media access control address. These are what are called burnt in addresses. When the manufacturer creates the network interface card, they write the MAC address to the NIC. In this example, you can see the Ethernet address over here. So that's the MAC address written in hexadecimal. It's a 48-bit number that identifies the device on an Ethernet or Wi-Fi network. Here's another one with a MAC address written on it. When you go into Windows or Mac OS or Linux or iOS or Android, you'll be able to see what your MAC address is. So as an example, on this Android phone, if I go to settings, Wi-Fi connections and scroll down, I can see the MAC address of the device. It's actually using a random MAC address for better privacy. So we can see the MAC address here of 1267-0EFD7640. That is a hexadecimal representation of a 48-bit MAC address or hardware address for the device. And yes, it can be changed, hence this being randomized. We can also see the IP address, IP version 4, 192.168.0.206. And then we can see an IPv6 address on this phone. On a Wi-Fi network, something similar is shown. Notice here we can see the Wi-Fi address, the MAC address of the device, and then we can see the IP address of the device, 192.168.1.120, IP version 4 address. Now, on a local network, let's say the local Wi-Fi network or the local Ethernet LAN or local area network, a device is known by its MAC address. So when you send traffic across Ethernet or Wi-Fi, the device has to have a MAC address, burnt in by the manufacturer or randomly generated as an example on of this Android phone, but the device has to have a MAC address to communicate. It also has an IP address, which is generally used for communication locally, but also for communication to another network. So a network interface card basically gives us access to a network using once again, copper or fiber or Wi-Fi.